Welcome everybody to the Oakland A's franchise. Today we're streaming some spring training games. After a very exciting offseason, we have loaded this team full of new competition, fresh faces, and I think that spring training is going to be a lot of fun because there are so many roster battles to take care of and so many players that could make the starting lineup, could at least make the opening day roster. We have made this team very much more competitively. And we're going to need some time to sort out who exactly is going to fill these roles. And that's what spring training is here for. And I want to stream some of it just so that we can enjoy some of these roster battles and get to know some of these players. But soon we'll be on to year two with the A's doing regular episodes once again. These streams will be very optional. If you don't want to watch these, I'll do a spring training video where I recap everything, show you the final roster, and explain why certain decisions were made. But the spring training is how the sausage is made. Welcome, everybody. What's going on? Chat's filling up. Good to see a lot of you here already. Will Aaron Don be invited to camp? No, not here in year one. I don't have any rookies on the camp roster right now. So they're down at single A for the time being. And then I'll probably assign all of them to double A right away. Cam Cope, maybe he ends up a little bit higher. Just or, uh, not Cam Cope, but, uh, but Aaron Don. He's uh, already here at double A. So I wasn't really thinking about getting those guys into camp despite pretty good ratings. I want to see, you know, Don develop a little bit before he's facing big league pitching. The one that's interesting, though, is certainly Luis Estrella because he's already at his potential. So what do you do there? You know, he's already a 73. But I still think that I don't want to rush along the rookies and we have enough to sort out as it is with our current big league roster. Been loving the A's series so far. Keep up the great work. Thank you. I have been really happy with the series so far, both uh, the episodes I've been making and the response to it. April has been one of the best months on the channel ever because of this series. And I have big plans for it, and we're only partway through, one season in. Now, I have played one game in Player Lock just to get a uh, thumbnail made for this stream, but I also have one highlight for you guys I'd like to share. So, you know, we're looking to see what everybody's capable of here in spring training. And here's Lawrence Butler putting down a nice drag bunt and legging out the infield single. That's all I got for you for now, though. That's all I've really played to this point. I had a few at-bats with Butler. I have messed with the lineup. I know some of you were worried that maybe Butler would be phased out a little bit, but he still very much has a chance to earn a regular starting job, and I like him against lefties because he's a little bit better than a lot of other left-handed hitters in this lineup. So nothing is set at this point. Why don't we begin our journey here and just play uh, against Arizona and Merrill Kelly. So what I'll probably do is play a full game and then simulate a little bit. Maybe do some player lock afterwards, or at least play a game after being able to sim a week or so, and then having more stats to look at. Because the decisions I make for this roster will be based on both stats and just being able to evaluate these players here in real time. So, welcome to spring training, everybody. Let's get underway. What have I missed? Not a thing. Maybe you missed uh, the bunt I showed, but that's it. How do you make a lineup in baseball? I think that there's a lot of ways you can handle lineup construction, but I think for me, I'm just looking to get contact and guys who can uh, do some damage higher in the order and just hopefully get uh, the lineup stronger as we go. So Paul Blackburn's going to be on the mound as we get underway here against John Birdie and the Arizona Diamondbacks. I'll look to get the starters um, probably a few innings. When I went through the first game, they gave Shintaro Fujinami just one or uh, three innings and then used a bunch of pitchers afterwards. So you'll, you'll see a lot of guys here. I'll be pinch hitting and 
Especially for guys that we don't need the info on, like a lead miss Diaz. I probably won't need too many at bats with him. I've already been used to him. Already. Hell yeah, just finished watching your off-season recap. Love it, Cannon. The off-season was a lot of fun, and we're at a point, I think, in this series and in my Titan series where I'm just so invested in what I'm working on, and I cannot wait to get to these new seasons. So this week is NFL Draft Week in real life, so that's obviously something I think a lot about, but I don't really cover a lot in content. I don't plan on doing a mock draft this year just because that takes time away from doing content that I would rather be doing. And I think instead, if I feel the need, I will do a stream on Friday where I recap round one, talk about it, give my thoughts. And then also, if the Vikings do something huge on draft night, I will do an emergency stream on the main channel, and I'll talk about it. I'll give you my raw Viking fan emotions. But this week, it's really nice because generally draft week is very unproductive for me. But I get a chance here to do a bunch of streaming. I'm going to be doing streaming for this series, streaming for the Titans franchise as we get into preseason. And that's going to be tomorrow on the channel. I don't know how many streams I will be doing, but it's going to be streams today, tomorrow, Friday, I think, recapping the NFL draft stuff. And then all the while, I'll be breaking all that content and streaming stuff into videos that will end up, uh, you know, going on the channel later this week. There's a good strikeout to finish out the inning for Paul Blackburn. Hey Kane, just a quick warning, but there seems to be a quick manage bug going around that causes a franchise file to crash. Just happened to me, just FYI. Thank you. I didn't plan on using quick manage, but I definitely won't now. I have not been uh, using it at all, actually, going through this series. The Titans offseason was incredible, absolutely. I think one of the best offseasons I've ever had, one of the most exciting. Will you be live Thursday? Ah. I'm not planning on streaming Thursday unless the Vikings do something wild. But, uh... I guess I'll keep y'all posted. I mean, the draft for me, I just love watching it. I don't like spoilers. I don't like paying attention to, to anything but the draft. So, I'm really looking forward to it. And Teoscar hits one to deep left. And this one is gone. On the first swing I ever have with him, Teoscar Hernandez has left the building. This was the big free agent move we made. And we signed him to a contract paying him less money per year than a lead Miss Diaz. He's coming off a down season. His power has been trending in the wrong direction. It's a buy low on a very good player. And that's exciting. Rogers trade thoughts? Well, it's kind of anticlimactic because we've known this is in the works for a long time and... I think that it's a pretty good move for Green Bay getting back the conditional second next year. So if Rodgers plays 65% of snaps, they get a first round pick in 2024. And that's the kind of insurance you want to have when you're not sure about your quarterback. They picked up the option, obviously, on Jordan Love. So they will have to deal with that situation. But, or no, did they not pick it up? Has that not been officially announced or did they? But either way, they position themselves where, you know, their defense is competitive right now. And if they do something, you know, in the draft, they can boost the offense. But, uh, you know, it's a good trial for Love this year. And then if it doesn't work out, they get two first rounds next year. It's the exact same thing the Eagles did with Jalen Hurts. A year ago, nobody was as sure about Jalen Hurts as they are right now just days after he signed a $50 million a year contract. The Eagles had their two first round picks this year, positioned to take a quarterback if it was necessary. And the Packers will be in the same boat next year if Rodgers plays at least 65% of snaps. 
I really hope the Packers do not take JSN. I need them to still not believe in these first-round receivers. I think JSN would be really, really good for them. JSN being Jackson Smith and Jigba, receiver from Ohio State. Reminds me a little bit of, uh, is Amon Ross St. Brown a fair comparison? <clears throat> Packers definitely drafting Darnell Washington. Yeah, tight ends kind of been mocked to them a ton. Usually it's like Dalton Kincaid or Michael Mayer. Oh, he didn't get him. But yeah, I thought it was a fine trade for both sides. Obviously, the, the Jets give up a ton to have a chance at going and having success in 2023. And, uh, you know, maybe longer if Rodgers plays that long. But it's a short-sighted move on their part. It's akin to, you know, the, the Rams doing all they did to gear up for their Super Bowl run, knowing the bottom could fall out when it was over. And it did. So... But the Jets, you know, they have a good young roster in a lot of areas. Defense improving, young receivers, and talent there. So even if Rodgers is only there for a year, you can probably have a great year with him. And then, you know, you move on to the next one. Or you they then be back in the veteran market and maybe be looking at like a, a Kirk Cousins or something like that if Rodgers didn't come back. We got Cody Bellinger, by the way. I want to focus mostly on the baseball today, but certainly football on the mind. Uh, someone asked earlier about Bijan. I think this is a, a very good litmus test here for the NFL as Bellinger strikes out. But we have seen like the devaluation of the running back position. And I think it's actually real now because you look at free agency... And there weren't a lot of big deals. The one that was a little surprising was David Montgomery going to the Lions. But overall, you're not seeing a lot of years. You're not seeing a lot of money. Capel, the rookie of the year, cashes in. Base hit left field. The run scores. The A's on fire early. But you go back to like the Alexander Madison deal. You know, a couple years ago, you'd be expecting him to be a free agent and then maybe get a starting contract to go somewhere else. He ends up signing back with the Vikings for two years, like $7 million. Now, most of that seven's guaranteed. And this is exactly what I said should happen to running back contracts. There is no need to have a running back on a four-year deal unless it's a rookie contract. Less years, more money guaranteed. And maybe... If we get through a couple years of this and teams are not burned on bad running back contracts, I think you can start to see their value creep up again to where you can have a decent free agent go and sign two years, 14 million or something. I think that can exist. And I think the, the foundation for that was laid this off season. I do agree on Capel. I think I'll edit his potential to be at least like a 72 for being Rookie of the Year. Oh, way to bury the lead here. We got Tyler Soderstrom, top prospect in the A's organization, trying to make the big league club as our first baseman. Owen oh 2 though with two down. Long first here for Merrill Kelly. And Soderstrom dumps it in left. And we wave home another run. And Soderstrom has an RBI single. I've only been live for 14 minutes. You have not missed very much. So how about the offense coming to work here in the first inning against Merrill Kelly and the Diamondbacks? And now we got Nick Gordon. Two on, two strikes again. One and two. To me, Gordon's ratings were a little higher than I expected. I know he had a good average in 22 with the Twins, but... I don't know, contact in the 80s? I felt like uh, that was obviously too good to pass up here in free agency for this squad. Now, one thing I love that I did... I'm staying kind of true to their Moneyball formula right now in terms of, like having a smaller payroll. I made all these additions here in the offseason. 
our payroll is only up by 20 million. So we're still a very low payroll team, just a more intriguing one now. I do think this team is going to be fun. I think more competitive, but still, you know, definitely, I don't see us finishing any higher than third in the division in a really good year. Ah, Spencer Strider had a good one going last night. Yeah, he was perfect through six. And then uh, I didn't see the no-hitter get broken up after there was an error that broke up the perfect game. And then, uh, you know, I was watching a little bit of the A's and Angels last night. And uh, I saw the A's have... They had uh, Jesus Aguilar and Brent Rooker hit back-to-back -back homers twice in the game. And then the Angels stormed back late, had this incredible rally... All for it to go to extra innings, and the A's beat them 11 to 10. It was a pretty wild game. I was catching the highlights on uh, MLB's YouTube channel. I don't know how Angels fans do it. Because I've actually been watching a fair amount of Angels baseball so far this year. They're West Coast. It's the only thing on at night. And their bullpen is awful. You're never out of it against the Angels. Trust me. I don't know how you just can't field an average roster around Otani and Trout with all that money and everything. Just be average everywhere else, and Otani and Trout can, can take you a little bit further than an average team will. You don't have to be that good of a team to be a wild card now. With three wild cards in each conference, you don't have to be that good. You have to be a step above mediocre. The Angels' bullpen continues to screw that team over year in, year out. Dude, why am I swinging at everything high right now? Yeah, Taylor Ward's a good player. A Brandon Drury hit two homers for him. The Rays are awesome. The Rays are having an outstanding year. Hitting a bunch of home runs. Always have solid pitching. Sucks they lost Jeffrey Springs. He was playing really well. Another team I want to watch. I'm hoping I can catch some tonight. I didn't realize just how good the start the Pirates were having was. I haven't caught a lot of their stuff, but I think tonight they play the Brewers, and I'll be watching a little bit of that. The Rays are 20-3. and three. That's That's incredible. Last year, the starters were the issue. We fixed that a little without doing much for the bullpen, and now the bullpen stinks. Bullpens are really tough to, uh, to get right long term. You have guys that'll be great one year, and then the next year they just completely fall apart. It's tough. We got Teoscar up again. The... Oh, I don't know. I thought the Pirates played the Brewers. Maybe they do play the Dodgers. I don't know. But the Dodgers are not like the Dodgers of the last handful of years. I mean, they're definitely in more of a transitional phase if you look at their roster overall. And some of the guys, holy cow, that curve was nasty. I didn't know Merrill Kelly had that in his bag. But the Dodgers lineup, I mean, it is certainly not what it used to be. You can out-hit that team, I think, without too much of a hassle. Muncie's playing better this year. Outman has been really good for him. I, I don't think that it's all that great of a team right now. I mean, their pitching is always pretty solid, but the lineup is just not complete like it was. 
you know, Seeger's not there anymore. Bellinger's not, and he wasn't very good for them the last couple of years anyway. Let's go. <clears throat> yeah, you got Freeman, you got Betts. It's not a bad offense, but, like, they're, they're usually a juggernaut top caliber offense. And they, they really aren't now. Then you have the Twins, my favorite team, and their offense is so frustrating. For years we've been screaming about the pitching, and now they've addressed pitching. It's at least, I think, on a solid level talent-wise, and they're performing way above, I think, where they, they should be traditionally. But the offense sucks. Correa's doing nothing. Miranda's doing less than nothing right now. Buxton, you know, he's got a few home runs, but... He's not really been all that consistent either. Like, outside of Joey Gallo and Michael A. Taylor, it's been pretty rough for the Twins offense. You know, Kepler's starting to get a couple good games strung together, and Polanco's making a big difference now that he's back and playing well. But the Twins are winning all these... They won a bunch of games first two weeks, you know, 3-1 and 4-2. And now, pitching hasn't been quite as good, because it was never going to be. And the offense hasn't woken up, so they're barely above 500. Gallo's been awesome. He missed a little time on the injured list, but when he's been out there, he's been their best power hitter. Pretty sure he has the highest OPS, leads the team in home runs. He's had a lot of really good at-bats, too, and there's a homer from Seth Brown. That was center cut. So Brown homered in the first game of spring, and he's done it here on day two. I feel like the cards are going to be all right. I thought they played excellent, like, the first week when I was watching them. I know they've lost uh, a fair amount of games since. I'm not even sure they're 500 at the moment, but I feel like the Cardinals are going to be okay. A lot of their offense, though, is, like, young guys, and I feel like they're trying to bring so many of them along. You have to probably see where this team is more so in a couple months, and if those guys, you know, like Donovan and Walker, how well they're playing then. How long is this stream going to be? I'm not exactly sure. Going to play at least a couple full games, and then we'll go from there. <clears throat> Thoughts on the new contract for Brian Reynolds? I'm, I'm excited about that. You know, I want to see these teams that traditionally don't spend and their fans are always frustrated. Like, I want to see them actually make an effort to be competitive. And, you know, you lock up Reynolds to an eight-year contract. That's awesome. They've already signed Hayes. So, I wish O'Neill Cruz wasn't hurt. But the Pirates playing so well, and it's nice to see some investment in the product. Cody looks so tall here. It's also because he stands straight up. Like, Cody's got one of the most violent-looking swings I've ever seen. He's going to have to adjust that at some point, right? Can you picture a 35-year-old man swinging with his, like, what he does to his back? No shot he has that swing in, like, six years, right? Cody? Hey, last few years, that's a ground out into the shift. That's a new age single for Cody Bellinger. I like Cody's stance, but kind of hurts my back. Hey, Connor Capel. We'll start to do some... Uh, 
substitutions as well as we get through the third inning and get uh, another trip through the order. Grounded singles back on the menu. It has been refreshing. I'm curious, what do you guys think of all the, the rules that we've had in terms of uh, pace of play with the pitch clock and then the, the no shift and everything? I like the three batter minimum. I've always been a fan of that. You know, bringing in one guy to face a lefty and then another commercial break, another warm up. Like, I'm glad that's gone. We've been out of that for a couple years. The pitch clock, I think, has been really nice. You know, if you're not paying full attention, like, full at bats can go by and you're like, wait a minute. You know, if you're, like, sidetracked during a game, you don't realize how fast some of these games are playing until you're used to maybe making dinner while watching a game or doing something else and you realize like a whole half inning's gone by. What's MLB the show supposed to do with the pitch clock? To me, just don't even bother, honestly. I think that you can ignore it for the games just because... You know, we can skip everything here. We have our own pace of play, and I don't think adding in the pitch clock actually makes the game better. It just emulates real life a little bit more. And I know I'm the realism guy, but I don't think the show needs a pitch clock. Maybe for, like, competitive online. But if you're playing the CPU, you should be able to take as long as you want and vice versa. Another big thing, though, like, you couldn't have had the pitch clock, I think, if you didn't also have pitch com. I feel like that's also, coupled with it, made a huge difference. That's into left field, and over is Brown. Yeah, trade logic is much more of a concern. So I put in uh, Ryan Cusick. I also want to get uh, Forrest Whitley a little playing time at some point. I'll start getting him uh, stretched out. Mm. It's going pretty good, Gold Sparrow. How you doing? I'd really like an expansion mode in here. That's one of the things I love about 2K is you can have an expansion team and you're not replacing anybody. It just creates a whole new expansion team. And their my GM or whatever they call it feature is so much more fleshed out than Madden or the show. It's a shame I don't get to play it more. I don't know. I still don't know a lot about basketball. I did my series with the surf, and I felt like it was uh, a lot of fun. It showed I could pull it off. I need to play just more 2K, I think, casually to get into it a bit more. I've been watching a little bit of the playoffs, and, you know, the NBA playoffs can be absolutely incredible to watch. I was uh, watching the Wolves a bit in game four and watching Anthony Edwards take over and that game go to overtime. It was pretty amazing. And then I watched uh, the Heat last night at the very end. You know, Giannis, he, uh, he wanted out. It looks like he was uh, hobbling a little bit. And then Jimmy takes over. The Jimmy Butler last night was on another planet. I had a little playoff hockey on the other night when the Wild were playing. I didn't watch it super closely, but I had it on. I think the series there is tied now, right? Oh, yeah, I should probably sub out Diaz after this. But yeah, sports have been entertaining lately. I mean, I got this series going for me, my Titans series. The NBA playoffs have been fun to watch. Baseball's been fun to watch overall. It's 
It's pretty good right now for a sports fan. Got the XFL playoffs coming up. All right, I'm going to start subbing out guys that I don't need to see. I want to play a little bit more with, like, Teoscar, though. Although I don't need to, like, see reps to know what he's going to do this year. I just want to hit with him. The Titans preseason will be tomorrow. Ah, got jam, but it might fall in. You bet it does. And I could have gotten third base probably on that, but... I'll take an RBI single, making it 5 nothing A's. If you haven't already done so, please drop a like on the video. I'd appreciate that. And I'll try to call time. Oh! Forget the timeout. Seth Brown's done it once again. Off the scoreboard in right field. I tried calling time. Didn't work. So I'll just hit a home run instead. Yeah, Matthew, I thought Philip Lindsay was certainly NFL caliber. I mean, he had some really good times in uh, Denver. I think even beyond his rookie season, he looked good. But uh, I guess I haven't seen much. Last year, he didn't make a lot of noise. Seth Brown's got three homers already. Bang. Well, they got Austin Gomber now. All right, as much as I like Shea, why don't we get somebody else in there maybe? Uh, he is playing catcher, so I don't have too many catchers on the roster. Any of these guys got catcher flexibility? Probably not. We'll leave in Shea. He's a young guy. Soderstrom could do it, but he's playing first base. It is eight to nothing, by the way. I will upgrade Capel's potential, yes. I'm thinking 72 or so for his Rookie of the Year win. Although I don't know what his potential truly is. It's a D. I don't know if it's 69. It's allowed his ratings to get to 70. But I think I'll increase it to like a little bit above where his overall is now. I'll play Trenton Brooks. We'll get there. 75 for Rookie of the Year? What do you guys think? 75? I'll hit here with Cody again. 75 sounds good. All right. We can do 75. Will there be a new stadium? At some point, I would like to introduce one. I think I'd like to do it... Hopefully have it ready for like when we're starting a new year and we feel like we're turning a corner and we're trying to like, you know, celebrate the, the development of the team. Talk about now we're going for the playoffs and bang, we have a new stadium. I kind of want to do it at that time. I think I want to get into the editor like now, maybe a little bit this week and start to toy around with it and see what's possible and then come up with the design. So I know one thing I want to do, and this is just because it's a little nostalgic and uh, I think it actually fits what we're doing with our team. I do want to put a, a decent sized wall in right field. When I was growing up watching the Twins play, they had uh, what they called the baggy, which was a tarp that kind of extended the wall in right field. So line drive home runs, it was a lot harder to get those out. And I think I'd like something similar in our stadium. I also like what Target Field has now in right field, where it has a bit of an overhang. And it can create some very tricky bounces off the wall. And I'm not against having a little bit of that. With He just swung on a pitch that hit him, by the way. Let's not forget that, Corbin Carroll. But uh, I think some... Uh, Messing around with the wall to create, you know, awkward bounces and just difficult plays in the outfield where speedy players can take advantage of that. I'd kind of like a little bit of that. Maybe not Fenway's outfield. Not quite that. But it's definitely not going to be just a standard 
like rounded outfield. It's going to get a little weird in some spots. Maybe similar to uh, Minute Maid a little bit. A green monster for the whole outfield. Maybe not the whole outfield. Maybe not the green monster. Yeah, we're shutting these guys down. What's going on? Should play at polo grounds for fun in the spring. You know, I actually meant at some point to do uh, a Rockies video at polo grounds. Just for fun. Just one game. That would have been hilarious to see Devers hit like five homers potentially if we could just pull it down the line. I'm playing on Hall of Fame. Doesn't really feel like it right now. I'm actually having a really good game. But yeah, Hall of Fame difficulties. Nice little 500 foot center field. Exactly. Almost got him with that one. I don't know the limits of the stadium creator. That's why I want to get in there and see what's possible and how it all works. And hopefully I can make something that is uh, worthy of being in the franchise. Rolled over to Soderstrom. I have no idea if you can add like effects, like fireworks or anything like that. I don't know what all it allows you to do. Do I like the MLB draft being during in the middle of the season? I kind of do because it allows them to still get those players in the minor leagues right away. At least, you know, rookie ball is typically what happens and then, you know, like fall league stuff. But, like, Zach Neto, he was just called up by the Angels not long ago. He was drafted last year, I believe. And then wasn't he... Did he play at, like, at A-ball last year? Like, how did he get the, the jump so quickly? I think he played, like, 40-some league, or if he played any, like, high A. Soderstrom's been fine. I mean... If you're not making a mistake at first base, that's all we want to see. He started that high A, got called up to double A after just seven games. Yeah, so that's pretty rare. That's pretty rare that a guy is playing at double A, you know, just a couple months maybe after being drafted. But it's, it's cool to see a lot of these guys go through the system a little faster. It's weird. You know, in... in NBA and NFL, a lot of sports, you can be drafted and be one of the best players in the league within a couple of years. Sometimes it doesn't take very long at all. Those sports are so athlete driven. Baseball's not that way. So I don't know what's allowing these players to make it through faster if it's just different philosophies in terms of how long you should develop guys, how much time they really need. But uh, it's cool either way to see a guy and realize that he was drafted not that long ago. Audio glitch. How's the audio right now? Let me check on my settings. No drop frames better okay i don't know if that was on youtube's end or my end but i never have audio glitches on my end all right i have no idea what all you heard and what you didn't so i'll reiterate a little bit that uh i don't know exactly what's allowing these players to go through the system faster if it's like a philosophical difference and how they're developing players and Maybe they want to see them get Major League action early just to see. And then, you know, if it doesn't work out, you can always use options and get them in the minor leagues. Or if these prospects are just more ready. I don't know if, you know, their college experience or whatever they have is just better preparing them. I guess I'd like more insight on that. Because typically, you, you draft guys and 
it'd take a, a little bit longer before you ever got to see them play in the show. That's down the line, and a fair ball. Forrest Whitley ruins our no-hitter in spring training. That's kind of what I was thinking, Gordon. You know, you got these players playing well. I think putting it to the test at a higher level is maybe something that they're more open to now. As Marte turned on it, and that's gone. Forrest Whitley. What's going on? I've barely thrown three pitches with the guy. The snakes are all over us. I've thrown two pitches. We have a double and a home run. not how you make the roster I want to get Mason Miller in there bang thoughts on single A being an option to play in the show absolutely I think that we're long overdue for having like the entire minor league system there are people out there that would play rookie ball they play fall league if they could can you imagine if you get to the offseason and you have the off option of playing like rookie ball with the guys you just drafted? That'd be sweet. It's been a long time since we've seen cool stuff like that added into our uh, franchise modes. The people making the games 15 years ago would have loved to do that for you. Down the line, another extra base hit on the way. Played that perfectly, and it'll only be a single as a result. Yeah, out of the park has everything. Dominican Winter League. That's what I'm talking about. There are hard cores out there that would eat that up. Got him. So not a good inning there for Forrest Whitley, but got through it at least. World Baseball Classic would be fun. Yes, actually... Uh, it's behind a bunch of stuff. A MLB 2K6 had the WBC in it. They advertised it on the back of the box. Your attention, please. Now for the yeah, we need Jace Peterson replaced. Let's put in uh, Abraham Toro. I'm just going to do a bunch of mass subs. Just so I don't forget. I want to get Logan. Come on. I want to do more than just the guy batting. Is there not a good way to do it? Weird. Abraham Toro. Wait till in the field. All right, that's when it lets you do it. Thank you. Toro skies one to right field. Yeah, I think that it was a missed opportunity not having WBC in the game because this is the first time I can ever remember the WBC being like a little more mainstream. I think a big reason is Shohei. Let's 
Let's get Zach Geloff in there with a strike already on him. That's the one thing that really intrigues me, too, about FIFA. Like, they have all these different leagues in there. You know, you don't have to just play Premier League. You can play MLS. You can play, you know, Scottish League. All these different leagues. How many teams are in FIFA? In 2K6, was the WBC able to be played in franchise, though? I, I don't know about that. There was just a WBC mode in the game. NHL games have numerous leagues? Really? They have more than just NHL? FIFA, there isn't really that many. Football Manager has more? Well, I apologize for my casual American ignorance. More than a 700 teams in FIFA. That sounds like a lot to me. Yeah, we're impressed when there's over 120 you know stadiums and rosters in a college football game no nasty i didn't know the nhl had european leagues and stuff in there ladies and gentlemen your attention please now playing third now coming into the big kick paving and smith I want to get probably Brian Anderson in there just to play with a little bit. What about Justin Dean? He was a uh, pickup for us in the Rule 5 draft. And then I want to bring in Trenton Brooks. And at second, let's go with Nick Madrigal. We'll give Forrest Whitley one more inning. His first inning did not go well. I play Welsh second tier on Football Manager. That's how deep it is. That's awesome. I need to learn how to speak, you know, soccer just so I can... Uh, I need to enjoy Football Manager at some point. I've been told for years that it's the game for me. The World Cup, you know, sparked a little something in me where I'm like, hey, maybe I'm starting to understand this weird game that's played all over the world. But I've never clicked with it. I'm trying to find, I know I could probably go on like eBay and find it, but I have not yet found one of the games I'm looking for, which is on the Xbox 360 FIFA World Cup 2010. I want to play that one. I think that was the last like World Cup game they put out that was like specifically for it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you can find tutorials for anything these days for sure. A little bit better inning here for Whitley as he hangs a slider. Was there a 2014? Well, I'll have to add that one to the list too. I don't have any FIFA games in the collection right now. Physically. That's a strikeout. Much better inning. I've showed this a couple times. I have this, UEFA 2008. This has like the European national teams. So there's probably not a whole lot of content in here. 
but I mean, it's EA Sports. It's basically FIFA, but with national teams. So I could start there. I have a couple of them digitally, too, on, like, the PlayStation. Um, I played a little bit, like, a, an hour, maybe one night on, I think, 22. I think that became a, a PlayStation Plus game or something, so I got to try that out. But I really want to just mess around with, like, FIFA and 2K and open up maybe what I could do with those games in the future. I mean, when I started doing baseball content on here, like, I knew baseball. I've known baseball forever, but I wasn't very good at the games because I couldn't figure out the hitting for a long time. You know, they went through a phase in these games where they wanted to push, like, the analog hitting, and I was, you know, I was there. The load timing and the swing forward, I couldn't do it. Until I couldn't have fun hitting in the show until I went back to hitting with X. And that's when, like, the game opened up for me. And now, baseball is one of my favorite things to do content-wise. You should do NHL as well. It's good for GM modes. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm so focused on football and baseball. I've got to show some love to the other stuff, too, and see what more there is for me out there. Would love to see Kalispell Baseball. I would love to create Kalispell Baseball. Absolutely. Lang Langolier is right back up the middle. I forgot who was hitting for a second. NHL has expansion. I didn't know that. Any chance of an old NCAA baseball or basketball game? Better chance of baseball. I tried doing College Hoops 2K8 a few years ago. And I was overwhelmed to say the least. For one, I had to learn, you know, basketball. And two, the menus and the recruiting and everything, the interface. I was very overwhelmed. So many sports, not enough canes. I know. I know. And here I am also trying to do less on the channels so that I can have a better, uh, you know, hold on these series. I'm focusing a lot on this and my Titans, and there hasn't been a whole lot else lately. There will be more with the uh, Vikings and Rockies, but I don't know exactly what that's going to look like. But both series need a conclusion. I'll revisit after the draft. This week's a busy one. And then uh, I have a couple things in mind, but I am not ready to share them because I don't know if I'm going to follow through with them yet. They're just rough ideas that I have to experiment with for how to get these other series done. And I'll share when I can, but not until then. I've been really liking the switch, though, to just focusing on doing one video a day and pretty much alternating channels. Have not been missing many days. I think I've missed one here in April. I might miss Thursday. We'll see if I get something up on Thursday. Maybe I do a stream. Because, like, I don't know about y'all, but the draft is one of the most distracting things I've ever come across. I don't want to do nothing during draft week. And that's why streaming is so nice. Because I don't feel like I'm doing anything when I'm streaming. Three hours goes by in a blur. That's a nice flip on to second base. Who's impressing early, Kane? Uh, Seth Brown has homered three times in two games. We hit a home run with Teoscar Hernandez. We got some good innings out of uh, Paul Blackburn. And now I'm putting in Mason Miller. I literally take off every day of the draft from work every year. 
I've talked about this a little bit, but the draft is honestly perhaps my favorite sporting event of the year, and there's no, uh, there's no sport being played. I think the draft is just so much fun because you know that a lot of teams are going to make moves that make them significantly stronger in the short and long term. And a lot of these players that come into the league every year are going to immediately make a huge difference and possibly be some of the best players at their positions. I think the immediate impact level of the NFL draft can't be overstated. And then you consider, like, there is a long pre-draft process full of mock drafts and, you know, conjecture about all these players, so many opinions, and then the domino effect of what actually happens with trades and surprising picks and the guy that nobody was expecting to go in the first round. It is amazing sports drama and you don't even need a ball for it. I have a hard time seeing Jalen Carter fall below the Seahawks or the Bears. I'm interested in how some of his interviews went because that I think when you're in a situation like him and you've had off field stuff and teams are going to, you know, want to hear from you. I think that those one on ones are going to be really important to determining if you're even still on their board. And we don't know how any of that went. Arizona will probably take another linebacker. I'm not sure there's a linebacker from the take quite as high as they are, but I, I think that three is probably got to be open for business unless they're sold on one of the defenders up there. Another thing I wonder, this is a strong corner class. And remember the year when Denzel Ward was taken early by the Browns? He was not projected in most mocks leading up to that point to go that early. What if there is a corner that goes earlier than expected and that shakes things up a little bit? Because it feels like the top 10 is quarterbacks and then you got the defenders and the tackles start to go. And then, you know, maybe Christian Gonzalez or Witherspoon goes to like Detroit. But what about... Another team getting weird up there. I'm manifesting my Jags taking B Brian Branch at 24. I do like Brian Branch. He's a fun player. I like, you know, slot players who play really physically are definitely one of my weaknesses. The tight end thing is interesting too because every year they seem to go early. And almost every time, it wasn't the right idea. There are very few tight ends that go in the first round that end up justifying the selection. And I feel like the NFL is slow to learn its lesson there. Because I really don't think that the tight ends are... I don't think we should be talking about them quite as high as some of these mocks do it. I just don't think tight ends are actually big needle movers outside of the truly elite. And if you think you're getting one, you're probably lying to yourself. Like the Vikings having TJ Hawkinson, I don't think is a huge deal. I don't think there is a massive difference between having a TJ Hawkinson and an average tight end. I only think there are a few tight ends that make a big difference. And I think Hawkinson's really good. I think he's probably the fifth, sixth best tight end in the NFL. The Vikings weren't going to trade for him if Herb Smith was healthy. The only tight ends that I think move the needle like that are tight ends that produce like receivers. Okay. 
Would I like Mac on the Vikings? Not really. Already a couple years into his rookie contract. I wouldn't want him starting this year over Cousins. So, no. I'm out on Mac Jones. In the left. And that's two. Picked up Anthony K, by the way, in the Rule 5 as well. So somebody else that will have a chance to make our team in the bullpen. And that's Toro unable to make the diving play. Stretch it. Seth Brown. Ah, come on. Vikings trading up for someone like Richardson. Now you got my attention. But right now, the trendy pick is... As Soderstrom knocks it down and flips it to K, the A's win 8-2. The Hendon Hooker steam is everywhere in mock drafts. And I'm not really sure what to think. Like, to me, on the surface, it feels early. Coming off an injury, older rookie. Plays in an offense that's a little bit harder to project to the NFL. But, you know, you kind of have to be willing to make bold decisions when it comes to the quarterback spot and you know teams make a lot of mistakes in the process but they also hit big in the process from time to time so I don't know I think I need to watch a little Hendon Hooker a little bit more in the next couple days preparing for that possibility Do I think the Bears will take Paris Johnson or trade down again? I think it's hard to pass on a tackle there in their position. They've got to do more for the offense. They've got to do more for Justin Fields. And I think it depends if anyone slips through. I don't think a trade down again is bad. I think their ideal situation is they can upgrade their offense and still come away with like a really good corner and there are a bunch in the top 10. So that was a very fun game. We scored eight runs. I'd like to save quick and then I want to simulate a little bit and find another game to get into. And by simulating, we'll have more games played and more uh, players accruing stats. So I'll sim. I like to pitch with Luke Weaver because he's a new guy. So let's go to this game. And here's where we're going to start putting in a lot of these backups right off the bat. Trenton Brooks DHing. That's the kind of game it's going to be today. Let's get Madrigal in there. I'll play Brian Anderson in the outfield. He's got that flexibility. As much as I want to see Seth Brown hit more home runs, there's a little bit more for us to look at with some other players. Can I find anywhere for Jeremy Ironman, though? Maybe later on. Uh, Gunner Hogland. I forget if I put him on the 40 man. He is on the 40 man. Because I had to protect him in the Rule 5. Yeah, we should definitely get some Hogland gameplay in to see how he looks against Major League hitters. I will be playing the NCAA 4, uh, 24 game when it comes out, yes. And, you know, when are we going to get this 2K football game? Is that thing ever coming out? I was thinking about that the other day. Bring it on, I'm ready to play. They should be advertising that thing during the draft. The spring's going great. I'm loving it so far. I don't think it's a thing anymore. Don't say that, Aiden. 
Ellie De La Cruz. Isn't he top prospect with the Reds? Now let me sell you on Luke Weaver. How many of you rolled your eyes at that when watching the off-season recap or the off-season video? Trying to justify why we're signing Luke Weaver, whose advanced stats are better than his surface-level stats, although he's still not like a high upside pitcher. NBA Live. I have no idea if there's any active development on that. But it wouldn't surprise me, given with how many companies are downsizing, that there's probably no NBA Live in development. That's popped up. I think EA is more focused on dedicating resources to uh, the new college football game than a fighting, than fighting a losing battle against 2K. I will try maximum football, yes. I've been impressed with the stuff I've seen to this point. Yep, Capel's potential. Is RBI Baseball any good? I haven't played it. And the gameplay I've watched on YouTube was too rough for me to try it out. To me, it just didn't look like I'd have fun playing it. I'm not even sure if RBI comes out anymore now that the show is on all these platforms. I also thought this might be a year for a new Super Mega Baseball game, and I have no idea what they're working on. When EA bought the studio, I'm like, all right, that's EA getting back in the MLB game. Slap the MLB license onto Super Mega Baseball, and that is an outstanding game. Strike three. And with how simpler that game would be graphically, that would like... A Super Mega Baseball with the MLB license would probably be the best MLB experience on the Switch. You know, I don't think... The, I don't know how well the show runs on there. I had a friend who bought it last year, and he said they probably wouldn't do it again. But I think that Super Mega Baseball with the MLB license is a slam dunk. Been loving this series. Your MLB content is always great to watch. Thank you, Leo. I really enjoy the baseball content, and I'm glad that it's become a larger thing for me these last few years, working with the Rockies, with Sid, and now this project. I know sometimes the stuff I do on the second channel feels like it's, you know, it's an attempt to do something, but it's not always as grand as the stuff on my main channel, and I'm really trying to make this series... You know, the biggest and best baseball series I've done. And I think that I, I like the way I attacked year one. I like how I've weaved the streams in and included those things in episodes. I'm pretty happy with how this series is going. I don't think Sony's license with MLB is exclusive is the thing. Trenton Brooks, he's hitting 333. Bad swing. I'm not sure what that song would have been, Michael. I have a bunch of them I threw around for uh, like home runs and stuff in there. Give me something to hit. Nick Lodolo. That's popped up. I got something to hit, too. The show is not on PC, unfortunately. Brian Anderson. That's up the middle, and Anderson has a two-out hit. 
Yeah, I don't think that Sony's MLB license is exclusive. Especially, like, I don't think any of the big publishers have wanted to get back in the game against them, so... You know, the need for an exclusive license isn't really there, and exclusive licenses are significantly more expensive. I'm sure, you know, EA's license to have Madden and to be the only, you know, simulation NFL game is pretty steep. Got him. That was easy. Miguel Sano. Strikeout machine. That's a base hit to right. The game is on PC via Xbox Game Pass Cloud Gaming. Now, if there were ever a game that I would be skeptical to being able to be playing cloud, is it's this one. You can't have input delay or any latency when it comes to hitting a baseball. I'd be impressed if it was playable on the cloud. Like, truly playable on a higher difficulty. I know cloud gaming is improving a lot. But it's one of those games where you don't want low latency, you want zero latency. It is better than nothing, I suppose. I just think it would be tough to play. It's not bad, honestly. I guess it also matters if the latency is consistent because you can adapt to an input delay window if it's not significant. If you know when you need to swing and it's that consistently, then you can, you know, retrain your muscle memory and stuff to handle that, I think, just fine. I play Cloud Play exclusively through Game Pass, have been since launch, and it's great for me with my internet anyways. All right. Yeah, I know it's definitely getting better. I have a friend who was big into Stadia. There are not many people that were big into Stadia. And with uh, improving tech, I am interested. I I've seen the rumors that Sony's working on like a dedicated, I think, remote play or cloud gaming handheld of some sort. And if that, you know, didn't have huge latency problems, I would be interested. I'd love to have the option to play some of these games handheld. Um, like the Switch. But that's a huge hurdle to cross. No. I'm glad to see a lot of you are having a good time playing uh, MLB on the cloud because that makes me feel like the, the tech is getting to a point where it's something to pay a little more attention to. Ooh, that was a good one to hit. I just didn't know it. Yeah, that top shelf strike is one I struggle with. Lawrence Butler taps it. Racing down the first baseline. He is out. Do I have faith in the new EA NCAA game being good? I don't. I think that there's a lot of people working their expectations into an unsafe state. I think what gives me honestly the most confidence is the fact that they're willing to delay it, that we've known about this game for a long time, and that it feels like they're not rushing it along. But we know what modern sports gaming has become, and it's been so long since NCAA 14 that... I'm sure pretty much everything has to be redone. 
Are they going to put the resources in and do everything the right way so that Dynasty is in a better place than NCAA 14? Are they going to bring back Road to Glory and have it be as good as it was in NCAA 14? Modern game design, especially in our sports games, has changed a lot with an emphasis now on card collecting modes that want you to spend money. And I am very skeptical of EA's investment in single player modes. I don't care about Ultimate Team. I'm actually shocked that Ultimate Team has had the staying power that it has. That's going to be tough to get for Bellinger. One more out to go for Weaver. He's been pretty solid here in this game. I'd love to see zero ultimate team in this new NCAA game, but I'm sure there will be something. I do think it's a little bit foolish for EA to compete with themselves when it comes to uh, having two football games that come out within 60 days of each other. That one is crushed to right and gone. But I'm sure they're going to tack on an, an ultimate team mode to also capitalize on the fact that an NCAA game coming out is going to be a big deal. A lot of people are going to buy that game, at least the first edition, and I'm sure they're going to have an ultimate team <clears throat> wallet vacuum ready to go right there. That ball was smoked. And that ball is also struck well the right field. Another extra base hit. And the Reds getting after Luke Weaver here in the third. I don't think the new NCAA game is going to have any effect on Madden. It's one of the best-selling games every single year for the most popular sport. Yeah in the country. I don't think it changes any of Madden's strategy. Sano down the line! It won't end! Into the corner! Bellinger! Someone get that man an oxygen mask. He's been running all over the outfield in this inning. It is bullpen time. I just want to get my starters through the third if possible. Buying low on Luke Weaver is really helping. See? <laughs> For two and two-third innings, it was going great. One and one. Hey. We got a perfect game on Legend Difficulty. With the Brewers, I can believe it. With that pitching. I'm trying to pitch a little more carefully. You know, we've already allowed like four extra base hits. And eventually, Weaver gets out of trouble. We have a couple standouts. Seth Brown, we already know about him, but he crushed a couple home runs for us. Tyler Soderstrom had an RBI single. Uh, it's a little too early to say there are too many standouts. Outside of anybody, like, crushing a home run or something, there aren't uh, enough chances yet. I've only had a few at-bats with everybody. Freddy Peralta versus a fairly injured Rays team. Still have the deal with Rosarena and Franco. Geloff! Wow, that one went a long way, but it gets run down on the track. Still a good swing to see from Zach Geloff. Logan Davidson. The offense was on fire in the previous game. 
Big difference now is I have mostly, like, prospects in the starting lineup here for this one. And facing a pretty nasty pitcher whose slurve has had me a little bit off balance. No, you can't do custom classes in the show. But one thing they do have that is cool in their system is, uh, like, persistent draft classes. So players that didn't get drafted in my previous draft should still be there, but now a year older when I go back to scout this year. Now, here's my question for those of you that have gone multiple years into the future. If I had scouting data on some of those guys last year and they're coming back for this year's draft, do I already have information on them? Because that would be some sick depth, honestly. I got to get Luke out, out of there. I want to warm up uh, Gunnar Hoglin, by the way. Zach Jackson, last year sucked. This year, hopefully better because he doesn't have any options. Gone or not. Deep left, Anderson gets there. That was uh, scary. You need to re-scout if I recall correctly. And I suppose that could make sense when you figure, like, these players are developing as they continue to play college ball or whatever it is. I guess it would be college ball. So they might have different ratings this time around. Yeah, I don't get it. Jackson just hasn't been very reliable. He wasn't in year one. But relievers... Remember my Rockies franchise and Lucas Sims... I could have DFA'd the guy in year one of his contract. By year two, he was an all-star, had a sub-2 ERA, and was literally the best player in the bullpen. I love that about the show. The up and down years, hot and cold streaks. You never know what you're going to get in a given year. You can't take anything for granted. Why are they still pitching him? And not only do players have good and bad years, but the show has something other sports games lack, specifically Madden. And that is your performance affecting your contract demand and your market. It's hard to buy low on players in Madden because contracts and demands are dictated by overall. If you have a guy in a contract year who's 85 overall and you hit 40 home runs, his contract demands will look different than if he hit 10. And his ratings will regress because he hit the 10 home runs as well. Whereas in Madden, no one gets worse until they're 29. You know, sometimes 28, but you get what I'm saying. I don't think the show's system's perfect but it, it tries to have more nuance. And it does a better job of making on-field performance actually matter. I want to get Lodolo out of the game. That's crushed into left field. Shea Langoliers. I haven't had too many perfect swings today. Yeah, some of the regression in here based off of age, I'm not a huge fan of. Like, I think the show is at its best when you're talking about, like, you know, 24-year-olds and their performance or their development is dictated by performance. 
So you can have an A potential guy that you're struggling to do anything with, and his ratings won't really go up. They'll go up once you start to hit with him. But I also feel like potential ends up hurting a lot of players when, you know, you got deep potential guys like Connor Capel who end up winning Rookie of the Year hitting 270 with, like, 19 homers. Like, I think the game should have adjusted for that and changed his potential. So now I have to do it because I just think that it's a more realistic outcome. Good strike out there for Jackson. Ellie De La Cruz. I'm giving Hogland a couple innings once this inning's done. We need a Lego Undercover or Sunset Overdrive-esque playthrough or something. I've thought about doing a third channel for stuff like that, but I've been so focused on stuff here on the main channel. And I feel like if I ever did a third channel, it wouldn't be a very consistent one. It would just be like when I have an itch to do something for a given game. Because I really do prefer just making sports content. But occasionally there's something else that I think would be fun to mess around with. Sunset Overdrive, man. Talk about underrated games. Insomniac worked some magic in that one. And it's a shame it didn't get more attention. And probably will never see a sequel. I got me a physical copy, though. I got to have all my Insomniac games. You can find them for pretty much five bucks whenever they're in stock somewhere. Great game. If you like third-person shooters that are very, uh... Not very grounded. Where's the offense? They need to bring back Jet Set Radio Future. That's one game that never got the backwards compatible treatment on the Xbox Series X. And it's a shame. I've never actually played that game. But I've watched videos on it. And I've played enough skateboarding games to know that that game is, looks awesome. But uh, it didn't make it the cut, apparently, for the... Backwards compatible. Maybe there's someone that owns the rights. Maybe Sega owns the rights. And uh, they don't want to play ball or something. I haven't tried High Fly Rush yet, but I've heard that's a great one. And uh, I love rhythm games. Huge fan. So I think I'd really like High Fly Rush from what I've seen. Butler into center on a line for out number two. I got head coach on nine because of your series. Very hard game. It is a hard game, John. It's uh, It's got some of that old school difficulty to it. It can be unforgiving at times, and it's just very difficult to win. And keep your job if you're not on a winning team. Hope you're having fun with it, though. Gameplay is a little rough around the edges, but the managerial stuff's pretty fun. Riders Republic was fun. I love that game. I got a good, decent bit of time uh, put into that one. A uh, great outing, by the way, for Zach Jackson. And now Gunnar Hoglund gets his turn. Yeah, Riders Republic is one of my favorite games on the PS5. But I, I love like those extreme sports games and. Now with, you know, more powerful consoles and not needing as much loading time and what they're capable of, I think a game like Riders Republic can really shine. Probably one of the best games Ubisoft's made in the last decade. Holy cow, that's hit a ton. Tyler Stevenson crushes a Gunner Hogland fastball out of the building. I did play steep, yep. That's why I was looking forward to Riders Republic, because it was going to be, like, steep, but way more stuff to do. Steep also was... Actually, Steep was a different game. Steep was closer to Skate in terms of being more grounded and a little more realistic. And you weren't doing as many, like, over-the-top tricks and stuff in Steep. But it was very rewarding to pull off moves and to get better at the game. I like that one a lot, too. 
All right, Miguel Sano, this calls for a slider away every time. He always goes. Slider away. Base hit right field. That wasn't how it was supposed to work. To be honest, Kane, the move for Teoscar probably isn't very A's-like. Might not seem like that, but remember I signed him for less money per year than Eledmus Diaz. It's a huge buy low. And after all the moves I made in the offseason, our payroll is $20 million higher than in year one. That's not a lot. I saw some feedback that we should have gone after Blake Snell as a bit of an ace reclamation project, and I kind of wish I had looked a little bit more into that. But I think he was looking for a decent-sized contract, and that's why I maybe didn't spend much time thinking about him. That's a big double play for Hogland. Yeah, Teoscar's season last year wasn't all that impressive. That's why his market was down so much. So we'll take advantage of that. And that's going to be line to Madrigal. So after the home run, it was a little bit better. Your attention, please. Jordan Yamamoto. All right, they picked him up in the rule five. Ooh, I liked that one. Center cut. If you wouldn't mind dropping a like on the video, I would appreciate that. We got 228 likes, over 600 watching spring training here in the A's franchise. And the highlights that you see from here, many of them will end up in the video I end up doing for spring training where I set the roster and get us ready for opening day. I'd imagine, ooh, I just couldn't sit back. I imagine I stream a couple times this week. It, it depends also on, like, later in the week where I am as far as, like, um, if I feel like I have enough gameplay, then I can work on the, the video once I have that. But we should be through spring training by the end of the week. That is off the wrist. It took an... A hop there at the end, and he's going to reach Davidson. Is that an error, though? Nope, it's a base hit. I know the, the Fujinami Saturdays going away this quickly, I wasn't ready for it. The A's today, uh, I think it was Mark Kotze announced that now they're going to move Fujinami into the bullpen. So he's not going to be starting. His starts have not gone well. He's given up a ton of hits, ton of runs. They're going to try him now in the bullpen. That one was trouble. Trenton Brooks. I wanted this number to be 12, so we could call him TB12. But he's 76. That doesn't have the same ring. Brooks into center, but I was a little late. That was a missed opportunity on a fastball up. What pitchers hasn't gotten rocked with the A's? That's a good point. How's J.P. Sears doing in their rotation? I saw he was uh, there when he's been in our bullpen. Has he been a little bit better? I don't know how he keeps sneaking everything by me like this. Just swinging so early. It's going pretty good, RSF. How about you? Now the Rays look incredible so far. They've played a lot of good baseball. A lot of high-scoring baseball. 
Everything's clicking for them more than any other team, really. I didn't think that those pitches were particularly good, but I just couldn't sit back far enough for them. All right. Second inning up for Gunnar Hogland. Favorite Netflix show of all time. Probably Breaking Bad. Well, that wasn't really a Netflix show. It was just on Netflix at the time when it was popular. I want Denelson Lamette. Bang! Paint. Some quick count games? That could be a way to get through spring training, in all honesty. I would consider it. A lot of these players, though, I'm getting to play with for the first time, so I like the feel of having full at bats and. I get more of a sample size that way, whereas with uh, quick counts, you know, I might have one pitch at bats there, a whole lot more. That was nasty stuff from Gunnar Hogland. He might get a third inning out of this game. But will we score? And now I'm late. I'm getting pitches. I'm just not doing it. I'm just not doing the thing with the bat. Ballinger the other way. This one is still within reach. And Madrigal. I don't think the Wolves are coming back from 3-1, but the Game 4 win was a lot of fun to watch. If I had to guess tonight, they lose by double digits in Denver. That's a walk. To be fair, Madrigal has a small strike zone. Ah. I haven't really caught the Kings or Warriors stuff. What's their current uh, series looking like? I did not like the Nuggets run to force overtime. I thought that was going to spell the end of it. Somehow they won overtime, though. Butler just cranked one out to deep center, but it will be caught. It's tied 2-2. Two to two. I like to watch that a little bit. I haven't paid too much attention. I watched a lot of NBA playoffs a few years ago, but I don't think I've paid much attention since the Kings have gotten a lot better. I guess I was surprised to see that the Warriors with a lot of the same core are not as unbeatable, not as dominant. That's not good. I'm glad the Pirates are keeping their guys too. Fan base deserves it. There you go. What about the Bucks? Do you think they can recover? Down 3-1 to the Heat? I haven't watched a lot of NBA this year, but watching Jimmy Butler last night, it's like this is an eight seed team. They don't feel like it. Three ones a deep hole though.
That struck well to Anderson, but he's got a nice read on it. Not a huge hockey guy. I'd be at square one learning the game and doing content. I guess that makes me a, a fake Minnesotan, but... It just never happened for me. That's into the corner. Could score one. Pretty good speed. Bellinger getting this back in. They do wave the runner home, and there will be no play. This is Gunner's third inning, so he's allowed two runs. I never expected Hogland to make the opening day roster, but I, th I thought it was important to at least see where he's at. But I do think that he's close and should start the year as one of the better AAA starters. I saw a little bit of Lakers Grizzlies. I know that there's like the uh, drama with Brooks and LeBron and I, I wouldn't, uh, I don't know. If you're going to pick a fight or, you know, I just don't think LeBron is the one to to try to mess with like that. Pick an easier target next time, I think. Reminds me of uh, what linebacker was it that gave all the bulletin board material to Kirk Cousins when the Vikings played the Eagles and then he got cut because Kirk played out of his mind. Who was that linebacker? Was this Zach Brown? That name rings a bell. Dylan Brooks equals Eli Apple of NFL. Well, that that makes sense. I understand what that means. What's your reaction to the five gambling suspensions the NFL handed down this week? Players ought to know better about what they can and can't do. And that's going to be one of the things that is uh, penalized heavily. You will not get a break. No one's coming to your rescue if you are... Uh... Oh! Aggressiveness paid off! And we're going to home on this one! It's an RBI double for Zach Geloff. He's showing off some power for us in this game. Hernandez for MVP for the A's. Yeah, I think he's got a, a pretty easy chance to get there. Prayer, how you doing? I had a home run with him, like first pitch I saw with him here in the spring. So hopefully a sign of things to come. Who leads the team in homers this year? Teoscar or Seth Brown? Or a surprising third option? Seth, we got one vote for Seth already. Teoscar going to bounce back, I feel. Yeah, I think 17 is just, like, too low. I feel like both are good for 20-plus, but I feel like Hernandez possibly takes it. Oh, Bellinger's in there, too. We got a vote for Connor Capel, the Rookie of the Year. Nice. How about Trenton Brooks? No one's voting for the 62 overall D potential guy who might not make the opening day. That hit him. The comeback is real. Brian Anderson's turn. He has a few singles, but nothing hit all that uh, hard. That's the right center. Let's go. Extra bases for Brian Anderson. Here come the A's. Two will score. It's an RBI double. There's another new signing. Just a solid guy all around. 
The A's could use just solid guys that know how to play baseball. So now it's a two-run game. 18% chance of winning this game, they say. What does Shea Langoliers do to the equation? Is it a stadium thing for the A's leaving? Uh, usually it comes down to a stadium dispute. Shade a deep left field. This game is tied. Five in the eighth. It's a brand new game. Eighteen percent. I think you need to rerun the numbers on that. You should sign Max Muncy at some point so you can have both Max Muncy's in your organization. That is tempting. Fifty seven per cent in one swing. So Lamette's still going to pitch the next inning. I don't have any rookies on the spring training roster right now. Partially because that would put them on the 40-man roster, and then that would elevate them to spring training. And I know they're probably not going to be playing opening day. So I, I'm basically burning up an option just to see them in spring training, and I don't want to do that in year one. I log in when you're down 5 nothing. Within two minutes, you're tied. I want a pay raise. Take it up with management. I'll be boosting Capel's, poten Capel's potential. We've uh, settled on 75 after Rookie of the Year. Being fair. Cody to right center field. Doesn't seem to have the carry, and it's caught on the track. Do you manually rotate your teams during the season? I evaluate and recheck out the lineups and who's struggling and who's uh, deserving of going up. I want to do a better job of that here in the uh, spring. Madrigal left field back and caught. It's Nick Madrigal. Like, if that was the home run he was going to hit this year, like that would have been fine, but you can't get too excited over it. All right, Denelson Lamette's going to pitch. And then we'll have a chance at walking this off. I felt like I got this team significantly more interesting for year two, and it only cost us an extra $20 million in payroll. We still have a very low payroll, but it's under $100 million. If I'm not mistaken, it's somewhere around 80. Two and two to Stuart Fairchild. Got him. Blew the fastball by him. Only 20 million, he says. Yes. I mean, if you want to put it into percentage, uh talks it was more like a uh, 25 to 30 percent increase in payroll which sounds like I spent a lot of money the game is letting me spend like 150 though I think they should adjust the budgeting like in year one the team budget if you just calculated payroll plus budget available is like 120 million in year two, it suddenly became like 150. I suppose they do that. So, you know, with whatever team you pick, you have an easier time building a roster where you can pay players. But I want more of the challenge. Ah, I hit circle, but he uh, bobbled it and that caused him to not throw it right away. It's an error. Deserving an error. 
Bang. Can you set up platoons for simulated games? So, they will sub players when they need rest. But as far as, like, managing a platoon, you have to do that more manually. And that is something I should probably take a little more time doing this year because there are a lot of players that will be on the bench that I want to get playing time or just players that I want to play but will not play every day. And Lawrence Butler is likely one of them. It's bottom of the ninth, by the way. 5-5. Five, five. Spring training. Everyone on the edge of their seats. Butler rolls it over to first. A Max Kepler ground out. I've seen that one a few times. Yeah, we have a lot of guys that can't hit lefties because many of our players are left-handed themselves. I wish we had more switch hitters, but I don't even know if we have one on the main roster for this year. I just didn't happen to find a lot of switch hitters. I didn't really go out of my way to do it, though. But I, I want some switch hitters on the team. No Soderstrom walk-off. A warm-up for the 10th inning. Who's somebody who could give us some strikeouts? How about our closer? Let's go with uh, Acevedo. Anthony K wouldn't be a bad idea either. But you know what? I plan on winning this game right here anyway. So let's focus on Zach Geloff. 2-0. Down the line, foul. On the ground and skipped into center. Geloff continuing to hit the ball very hard. Despite his error, I've been impressed with his hitting here in this stream. Tuning in from Germany, love it. I'm glad the stream is early enough for all y'all over there. Logan Davidson. The best young shortstop the organization has. Ball one. Ball one. Steal second. Ball one, no 79 speed, 45 steal. Lefty on the mound. I might wait. I almost swung at that. Two and zero to Davidson. Three and zero. And Trenton Brooks on deck. That's into shallow left center field. And it's going to end the inning. All right, it's going to be Domingo Acevedo. Extra inning rule in effect. There you go. What's the plan date for the next Titans episode? I will be streaming the preseason tomorrow. And then working on videos for the Titans preseason and looking at streaming probably more of the A's spring just because there's more to do. And the NFL only has three games. So I'd like to probably stream at least twice here this week for spring training. Possibly a third, but for sure two. So I think today and then two days from now I'll look to stream A's again. Well, that would be what Thursday. Today's Tuesday. What? How many days are in a week? It's Tuesday. Two days from now is the draft. I have no clue what I'm doing on Thursday, honestly. Oh, Stevenson. Yeah, I agree. I'm pitching around this dude. Not intentional. This is an exhibition game. I will pitch around him like an adult. He doesn't seem interested in swinging. Ooh. 
And now the question is, can I strike him out? No. You think Tim Cannon breaks the touchdown record this season? By week 10, he should have that wrapped up. Two quick strikes on Spencer Steer, formerly a uh, Twins prospect. And that's in the shallow left. That looks to fall in. Anderson throwing home, and it's up the line. A run scores. Spencer Steer puts the Reds in front. That's awesome, Sydney. Into center field, and more should come around. Butler's throw is to Davidson, and it's seven to five. A Jay Allen base hit. So it's going to take a pretty good bottom of the tenth for us. I think at some point I'll do some 2K content again. But I don't have any plans right now. I'm not really looking too far past uh, summertime here and me trying to... I want to do a lot of this series before Madden comes out and I want to see just how far I can get. You know, when Madden comes out, I like Madden to be my focus again. But, you know, I'm not going to knock out a whole franchise in four months. Can't expect that. But I want to see how much I can do. At the same time, I want to see how much I can do in the Titans franchise, considering it's about to get interesting this year. And we really need to uh, get a move on. You know, it's, it's almost May. And that's on the ground. We will go to first and try to get at least two. Do I think Henry is on a short leash this season? Because of his talent level, I don't think it's a short leash for him. I think it's a different story if we're just not a good team. If we're like two and five at the deadline and Henry's not playing well, then it's easier to trade him. But if we're like five and two and he's not playing well, I don't see me trading him because what am I going to do? Play a rookie? Not if we're doing well. Brooks into right, and you know what? I think we will score in one pitch, and it's 7-6. to six. That's TB76 right there at the RBI, and the Oakland A's are still in this grinding. Brian Anderson knocked into earlier with a double. That's the slider that's gotten me a few times. Do I play Miami this season? I do not. I wish they were on the schedule for an entertainment standpoint, but they are not on the schedule. A couple of bad swings here against that slider. Not a third time, though. One and two to Brian Anderson. Now <sighs> Shea Langoliers tied the game earlier. Now with a man on. was late yeah when it comes to guys like mason miller i'll be looking at you know how many guys do i think we can fill out the rotation with and then there will be leftover guys that go to the bullpen instead he's a little bit better than the other pitchers that we were hitting off of in the eighth and ninth inning or in the eighth inning primarily
Two and two. No! Oh my god, that was awful. His slider. I can't handle it. So it's up to Cody. Man, just flailed at that thing. How does he pitch to a lefty now? It might be a little different. The righty-righty against him was actually tough. He pitched really good away. All right, that one I wanted. But a late swing again. Got the low strike. No, man, that was, that was tough. 7-6, Reds win it. Man, Alexis Diaz. I'm not very familiar with him, but I'd like to never see him again. <laughs> Where is this guy? Hey, it was a good pitcher making me look bad, though. Oh, he is he really Edwin's little brother? Hey, he is pretty nasty, though. If someone's going to get the better of me like that, it... it I'm glad it was him and not like some rando prospect. I I can handle that. Diaz, the next gallon, he's with the Reds. We shouldn't see him a whole lot. I can't imagine. We'll find uh, the next Zach Gallon at some point, I'm sure, in this series. What do you think about one more game? I think if I can play like three in this game, two with two or three in the next one, maybe a little player lock, maybe a tiny bit on my own, that should be solid for spring training. The Fujinami Saturday, it's not even Saturday, but we're going to celebrate like it's Saturday. I want to play with Anderson again. I thought that I had a, a good feel for his swing and everything. Uh, Geloff I thought was really nice, so I definitely like to hit with him. I have not gotten to play with Jeremy Ironman yet, so I want him to play third and Geloff to DH. So I'll just swap those two. And then instead of Cody in this game, I want Teoscar again, but in the field. Should I be worried about that? His fielding ratings are on the, the low end. And at short, give me more Logan Davidson. I want more Gordon in this game, too. This looks like a fun team to hit with. Let's go. Soderstrom is at first base because Langoliers is playing catcher. And I just wanted to try him out at first base. But I could play him at both. You know, he could always be there for an off day. I should probably play with him at catcher at some point. I didn't realize we were in the Cactus League. I saw palm trees. I assume we were in the Grapefruit League. I saw Fujinami hit like 102 over the weekend. He does have pretty good velo. I was just copying what the show had for him in game is all. That's pretty good numbers down there. When does it rain in Arizona? 
How much rain does Arizona get in the spring? In Scottsdale. No, it's not Scottsdale where it snows every year. That's, I don't think it does. Flagstaff is the one where it's like, they get awful weather in the winter, don't they? I've never been to Arizona. Monsoon season. One ball, two strikes. That's on the ground weekly for Davidson. Got him. Currently sitting in traffic for the next hour and a half home from work. What have I missed? We've had some pretty fun uh, games so far. We hit some rockets with Seth Brown for home runs. First swing of the series with Teoscar Hernandez was a home run. We had some really good swings by Zach Geloff and Brian Anderson last game. And I feel like the pitching has been very up and down. You know, we, we get two good innings from Luke Weaver, and then he gets annihilated for a third inning and leaves you not feeling very confident. Love this content. Very fun. Just subscribed. Love it. If you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. You should see content on this channel basically every other day. And the focus for me has been the series here with the Oakland A's. Deep left field off the bat of Tatis, but it stays in the yard. What's going on, Chris? Nick Madrigal always balls out for me just to let you know. I think a lot of those high plate vision, high contact guys will tend to sim fairly well, so I'm hoping that's the case for us. We play against Michael Waka. How often do y'all get those dust storms? I'm not sure if you're asking me. I don't get dust storm. But yeah, those don't look like fun. Trade for Drew Maggie, or is it Maggie? I watched the video on him getting called up, but I forget how his last name is pronounced. But uh, I hope he gets a chance to get his first at bat. I know he didn't the other day. Just sneak him in there for an AB. Let him make his uh, true debut. Greg Jones always does great for me. I'm not familiar with Greg Jones. I might have to take a look. <clears throat> How many homers? Four. We've hit two of them in this stream. I think Seth Brown's ready for the real deal. Yeah, Nick, I do have Aaron Don down at double A right now, and that's the plan for basically the whole class. Some of them at single A if they're lower rated, but... I think a lot of them will begin at double-A, and, you know, I think that while I tend to have a patient approach, I am not going to be patient just out of principle. If a guy is playing extremely well in the minors, I'll accelerate his process. We've seen that, you know, replicated in real life. This year, the big example is Zach Neto of the Angels who has less than 50 games minor league experience and was drafted under a year ago. Hernandez hit weekly. Probably just one. He's out. No, he's safe. So is there a chance we see Aaron Don in year one? There is a chance, but he's got to play extremely well to get there. Do prospects even play at single A in this game? There's no stats. They just kind of get a little development is what I noticed. Plus ones and plus twos. So I try to keep most of my main prospects at at least double A. Unless their ratings are like in the 50s. Which isn't often. Well, that's off the plate. Three and one. That should get down and it will but foul. I should have crushed that one. I've been my timing has not been perfect today. That's a walk. Michael Waka. With the walk. 
trying to go to any Twins games this year. Depending on how later in the season goes, if they make it down to Houston or uh, Arlington, it's possible. Michael Walker having a bit of trouble getting out of this inning. As the rain falls on him, he misses again. I haven't been to the Astros or Rangers games because I don't live near either stadium. Bases are loaded for Zach Geloff. No, I was just late. No. I'm getting so many, like, elevated pitches that I'm just late on, and I think that I'm keeping a lot of these sliders I've swung at in my mind that I'm sitting back a tick too late. But, uh, I'm not even sure if he threw a slider. Like... I gotta pay a little bit better attention to pitching arsenals. It's nice to know that you're not gonna see something. That's three pitches, striking out Machado. How many games do you sim in between gameplay? You know, it depends on the quality of team. The better my team is, the less I simulate between games. But we made it through year one in seven videos. So, there were a couple episodes where I went through like two months worth of games. And only played, you know, one. So, I feel like I can figure out a team pretty quickly. And once you kind of get into a groove and you know what kind of team you're going to be, it's easy to simulate and check the numbers. And if I can do it in seven episodes, then I feel like you don't have to play too much. I keep up with box scores, though, and... I don't check every single one, but I'm simming those games, you know, one at a time. And if a box score seems appealing, I'll check it out. Take a look at lineups and see if I want to make any changes to the roster. It's, uh, you know, simulating with a little more thought put into it is kind of what I like to do. And then I find the intriguing games to play. And a lot of times I'm playing a game because, hey, a pitcher I want to play with starts this one. Soderstrom to center. Does he make the opening day? That gets him closer. First homer of the spring. Glad to hear it, Joker. I think year two is going to be quite fun. First spring training homer on a perfect swing. Davidson, that's going to go foul. Four seventeen average. I'm not sure how many ABs that is. He could be like four for nine or something. I'm not sure if that math checks out. Three. Frustrating one to K out on. Um... I found an opening day roster that had a lot of uh, downloads and contained like, uh, I'm not sure if it contained Fernando Tatis. I think I had to download him separately and apply him to the roster. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, Detroit's another tough rebuild option. Especially if you don't get a whole lot out of guys like Torkelson or Riley Green. Because those are two guys they were counting on taking him out of this era. But that hasn't gone as planned. What hitting are you using? Uh, just 
basic settings. I don't use the PCI. I have it on simulation gameplay, Hall of Fame difficulty with buttons, input, and timing interface. So I all I do is hit X, circle, or square to hit. 99% of the time it's X. The player ratings can figure out the rest. As long as I swing at a decent time, we got a chance. Depending on who's hitting. Green is crushing it for me. That's good. You need guys like him to do well, or you've got even longer to go. What about Kerry Carpenter? Is he supposed to be a pretty good prospect? I don't know much about him. Using the Royals, Witt, Pasquantino, Melendez is a nice core. Pitching is really tough. Yeah. Melendez is the one I, I'm a big fan of watching. At least I was like a year ago. I don't know how great he's been since. Oh, Fujinami. Yeah, I don't have anybody getting warm yet. I say we go Hogland again just to get the innings up. I'll try to get through this one with Fujinami and probably regret it. Carey hit 43 homers year one. Jeez. Yeah. Maybe we're fine. Janami versus Reese McGuire. Let's try the cutter or the slider. Yeah, I thought Baez was a weird signing for Detroit at the time. I like them making an aggressive move, but Baez is such a volatile player. I think you feel a lot better if Baez is like the third or fourth best bat in your lineup rather than relying on him being the guy. I just don't think he's a cornerstone player in the slightest. That's on the ground. Ha Sung Kim. I like him a lot. Every time I watch the Padres, he seems to be hitting the ball pretty well. And now Xander Bogarts. This is where I'm getting nervous. Ooh. Yeah, how come exactly, like, the Cubs had their World Series run, that great young core. How come so much of it fell apart the way it did? Like, they didn't keep around. Who's left? Ian Happ? Because he had Chris Bryant, Schwarber, Baez... I'm not even sure if Hap was even, like, a thought at the time they won the, the series. And Rizzo, yeah. Where's Kyle Hendricks these days? I feel like I haven't heard of him in a while. Is he still with the, the Cubs? Yeah, Contreras, too. Throwing batting practice for the Cubs. Hey. 
Bryant to the co to Colorado was odd to me. I, I think I was just a little crossed up there looking at the pitch. Yeah, I think that it's a little weird when you consider they let Story go and Arenado go and then go pay another infielder big money. The Rockies core a few years ago when they made the playoffs was, I think, a pretty fun team. You had Arenado and Story and a little bit younger Charlie Blackman, Carlos Gonzalez. I liked that lineup a lot. One ball, two strikes. Ball. Favorite random mid 2010s guy. Julio Tehran is mine. Um. Ah. Late. Annoying. Hey, we have to hit Shea fourth. It's who we got. Random guy from the 2010s that I liked. Oh. Trying to think of a good one. Base hit right field. I should take Fujinami out of the game. My favorite 2010s is Ian Kinsler. All right. That's a good one. A lot of the guys I started randomly liking in that period, and I didn't watch a lot of baseball from 2010 to, like, 2015. But a lot of those guys are still, like, in the league somewhere. Oh, Adam Jones is a great one. Yeah, Adam Jones was a lot of fun with the O's. Like, imagine Adam Jones, but with these Orioles. Hey. Billy Hamilton, Brandon Phillips, Ramos Ramirez. Prince Fielder. I know he was a Yankee, but I always like D.D. Gregorius. And I don't like the Yankees one bit. But I like D.D. Oh, Hogland could not make the play. Machado will drive in one on the RBI single. Coco Crisp. Yeah, that's a great one. I was a big Carlos Gomez fan when he was with the Twins for a short while. Him leaving is partially why I stopped watching. Because I was tired of them trading away my favorite players. It happened literally like three or four times. Whatever happened to Gerard Dyson? I'm not sure exactly. Ryan Dozier. It's just becoming a random, like, not elite, but pretty good player party in the chat right now. Denard Span. And at the same time with the Twins when he was there, Ben Revere. I don't know whatever happened to Ben Revere. That's hammered foul. J.J. Hardy was your favorite player growing up? Yeah, I had a very different opinion of him because the Twins traded Carlos Gomez to get him and then he was terrible and then left and was good. Oh, one guy I really liked. And he went to the Twins, so you can kind of understand why. I liked him a little bit beforehand. But Josh Willingham. That's to center. Another run will score. Hoglin getting tagged in the fourth. 
Williams asked the Dio. Oh, yeah. You got to love La Tortuga. He was always entertaining whenever he entered a Twins game. Hope to see him again at the big someday. I liked Carl Crawford a lot, too. Yes. Uh, Passon, I called him out the double A late last year and I got to hit with him a little bit and it went well. I think he's like one of our better players at double A, might make it to triple A here this season. I'll have to see how the depth works its way out. Let's see if we can get some of those runs back. Mm, not with that swing. Always like Drew Smiley. You mean Drew Smiley who nearly had a perfect game over the weekend, but his catcher tackled him? Fielding a weakly hit ground ball. <laughs> No. Love this game of let's name guys. That's like sports fans' ev favorite thing ever. Like just listing off quarterbacks that haven't played in five years. Soderstrom does it again. Second homer of the day. Could he make the opening day roster to make his MLB debut? A couple more of those, and it's pretty much a lock. Oh, man. Jones, you just had one of my favorites as a kid. Edgar Renteria. Wow. When he was with the uh, Cardinals, man. I think it was the Cards. Yes. Leading off of San Diego, the center field, number 28, Jose Azuma. Let's get Zach Jackson in there. Where is he at now? Six games, 6.2 innings, no runs. Number 61. Marco Scudero. Oh. How about Shane Victorino? Come on, Zach. I only ever remember Richie Sexton in Backyard Baseball. Like, they had uh, in the backyard baseball and backyard football games, I think they'd have, like, a player from, uh, like, every team. And there were some weird ones. In the backyard football game, they had Bears quarterback Cade McNown. What a pick. I couldn't even tell you where Cade McNown went to school. I have no idea. Come on, Zach. Pass diving Davidson into center field. And with great speed, we got first and third with nobody out. Do you have football content on this channel? I haven't been working on it much lately, but I do a football series over here, yes. I've been doing football series pretty much nonstop for the last, like, six years over here. But 
Right now I'm focused primarily on baseball and we'll be looking to wrap up the uh, Vikings franchise I've done on Madden 23. Come on. I played poker against Renteria at the World Series of Poker. Now that's a unique story. Zach. Zach. Into right. That's one. I do remember Johnny Knox. He had an unfortunate injury happen that ended his career. It was a bad one. I play on Hall of Fame difficulty. It's been my favorite difficulty for a few years. I'm pretty sure for Knox it was like a, a back injury, spinal injury, Whoa, vertebrae, something. It was, it was not good. Way out in front. Come on, Zach. Rebound. Your ERA can still be salvaged. He's only allowed one run here in the spring. But he's got a couple aboard here. Or was it a neck? I don't know. I thought it was a back. But the neck is connected to the back. On the ground. Ironman can't get there. And a run scores. Trying to get to third. Seth Brown's got him. And now just got to get Cronenworth. Derek Lowe has been, uh, maybe it was Derek Lee. A lot of players with similar names have been uh, commented here a million times. Struck him out, but it was a rough inning there for Jackson. They can't all be perfect. Your attention, please. We got to get Daniel Hudson out there. All right. 5-2. Work to do. Musgrove. Ooh. Yeah, Nick Collins was another player who had uh, uh, an awful injury. He was very good for Green Bay. Come on. Yep. Slider's been uh, giving me some issues tonight. One. Foul tip. Have I ever played with Brett Barrett online? No, I've never played with really anybody online on this game especially. Don't know how I hit that one. I don't really play online at all. It's been a long time. I can't remember the last head-to-head -head I played on the show. That's a ball. Harry Douglas. I'm pretty sure a few weeks ago... Doesn't Harry Douglas do, like, either color commentary or some sort of analysis? I thought I saw him on a XFL broadcast. I can't remember if he was in the booth, but I swear Harry Douglas was a part of the, the team. Like, the broadcast team. Deep to right, Seth Brown. Again. This is not getting old. So that's five for Seth Brown. Three of them here in this stream. Can't be too shocked. He's having a great spring.
Teoscar Hernandez. Yeah, Rick Ankiel. I remember him when he was playing with the Cardinals. He was a lot of fun to watch. A lot of highlights on Sports Center back in the day. One ball, two strikes. Nope, outside. Hey! That's hit pretty well the center. Got to it though. I signed Colton Wong in my A's franchise. Seemed like a fit. Yeah, I'm sure his contact and vision uh, makes sense and he's a good defender. I think he's an upgrade over Tony Kemp. All right, Daniel Hudson's been very good here in the spring, and he's one of our free agent additions. Call me an optimist, but I don't think we're going to lose 100 games this year. I think we'll lose, like, 90. One ball, two strikes. Got him. I haven't gotten the chance to watch the Rangers much because I rely on MLB TV for being able to watch the games and I'm considered to be in both the Astros and Rangers markets. And I don't have the packages that carry them. So those are the two teams that I really don't get to see much at all. Struck him out. I think with the Rockies franchise, it's probably going to be a lot of simulating to kind of see what happens and pass some time. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit down, I'm going to take a day and work through like the off season, start to simulate the regular season, and then just, you know, see what happens. And then when I feel like there's something to make content and I'll piece everything together, a lot like how I did on this channel when we uh, started doing those episodes with the Vikings where we, uh, we knew the series wasn't going to remain the same anymore. And I was just trying to pass time and wanted to find the next interesting thing to talk about, basically. I feel like the Jets will be in pretty good shape with Aaron Rodgers. I think that they've got the defense and some weapons on there. so And also some coaching familiarity, which is nice to have. Nathaniel Hackett's there, so... I feel like... You know, expectations will be rightfully high for them. I do think the Lions deserve to be the favorites right now. late who goes number one i'm saying bryce young that's who i've said since the panthers traded up now the, the steelers hopefully an offensive lineman when's their first pick i forget if they pick uh, i know they pick at 32 which this year is first pick in the second round because the dolphins forfeited pick Do they pick in the first round Deep to left from Zach Geloff, and this one is just foul. 3.3 feet. Basically fair. Count it. Geloff is probably 
the most impressive prospect to me today. Not including Soderstrom, because I'm already kind of putting him on the uh, big league roster as, uh, you know, penciled in for now. But out of, like, the Logan Davidson and guys who are more AAA players, Geloff has been the most impressive. Steelers got 17. Okay. I believe they own 32 as well. But I would think... Oh, yeah, that's right, because Joey Porter's always mocked to them. Yeah, uh, that's a good spot to get a corner, I think. And I don't know if the tackles make it there. So I could see them going defense right away. One and one. Deep to right, Hernandez turns around and he does not get there and doesn't play the ball well at all. That is, ooh, we got him at third maybe, out. Nice job backing him up there. Brian Anderson. Darnell Wright might be there at 17. That would be a cool fit, I think, with their uh, their run game. I'd like to see uh, them do something to help get more out of Najee. And their offensive line has just not been very good for a while. So, got to start putting some investment into it. We got Tyler Soderstrom, two for two. Oh man, I thought that could be another homer, but he put it on the ground. I want to get Mason Miller in for the next inning. Very nice to see the Pirates keep Ryan Reynolds. That's a, a deal unlike what they're typically known to do. I'm very interested too in the receivers because there are a lot of interesting receivers in this class. And, ah. I think depending on landing spot, they potentially get more and more interesting. Because, like, these receiver prospects, there, there's kind of something keeping a lot of them from being, like, true number ones in most people's minds. But I think Quentin Johnston is a really good option. Uh, JSN. And I want to see who eventually... Who takes these guys? And I want to see where, like, Zay Flowers goes because I think that he's a really intriguing player, but I'm more intrigued if he's somewhere where he's more of the third option, maybe second. Big Jalen Hyatt fan. Ah, come on. Jordan Addison. Vikings trade up for Bryce. What do you do? Probably throw a party. I'd definitely go live, though. I'd definitely fire up a quick emergency stream, and uh, you get my reactions. Appreciate that, Eli. I hope the Vikings do something that warrants me going live for an emergency stream. But one thing I'd like for them to do that wouldn't warrant one is just, can you trade out? Can you trade back, acquire some picks? You have to rebuild the defense, and you don't have a second round pick, and you only have one pick in the top 80. I'm interested though, like, I do think they want to position themselves for the next quarterback, and they got a few options. Do you, ooh, nice job, Mason. Do you trade up, try to make something happen if somebody's falling? Do you take Hendon Hooker at 23? Or do you trade back, like one of my favorite options is to trade back and see if you can get a future first round pick and go into next year with two ones. That's kind of my ideal outcome out of what's realistic.
At the time when they traded Diggs, obviously it was unfortunate. But the way everything's played out now, very happy having Justin Jefferson, as young as he is, as good as he is. Wouldn't change it, wouldn't go back and alter that. Win-win trade. Don't see many of those, especially when both teams come out big winners. Mason having some more trouble here with Jake Cronenworth. But he's in there. And miss low. I think a big part of the Viking strategy, though, and I've talked a little bit about this, is they have rookies that they drafted from last year that didn't get to play a lot and it's hard to know internally what they think. Lewis Seen didn't get to play before, not much, before he suffered a really bad leg injury. Um, Caleb Evans played a little bit. I thought he had some really good moments, but I think he dealt with some injuries. Andrew Booth dealt with injuries, and we didn't get to see nearly enough of Brian Osamoa. But all those guys could be contributors this year. I just don't know how high level some of these contributors would be. And if they feel highly about them, that I think that changes their draft strategy and makes trading back probably less in their mind. Bottom of the eighth. Down by two. Nick Gordon. Oh. Come on, Gordon. Gordon to center. Well, that's going to be an easy play. Seth Brown already has five homers in the spring. He can't possibly do it again. A rocket pass short. Base hit. And the tying run is at the plate. Teoscar Hernandez steps in. Oh, I thought that was it. Was I early? Just early. One and two. In the dirt. And everybody calm down. Missed inside. Three and two with Shea Langoliers on deck. I did see Wander Franco's catch. That was pretty incredible. Popped it up. In play. Out number two. And Shea Langoliers will be next. One hundred from Suarez. No. Got to learn to let the change-ups go, but it's not easy. That almost hit him. Should get somebody ready for the next inning. I'll go Anthony K. Again nearly hit him.
Where does Bijan go, guys? I can't do nothing about that. That's just a perfect pitch. Hitting speeds he hadn't touched yet. Eagles, Dallas. A lot of the backups are already in. So I don't have to make too many subs. As a Bills fan, hopefully not New England. I could totally see him going to New England. That'd be interesting to see what Belichick would do with a running back of his caliber. Or I guess Bill O'Brien. Been watching for years. Keep crushing it, bud. Thank you, Will. Appreciate the super chat. I've had a good night here streaming with the A's. After this game, I will be wrapping up for the night. This is my third game. We've gotten a lot of uh, solid reps in here, and I will look to do the same thing here probably later this week, I imagine. I still don't know what's going to happen Thursday just because that's draft day, and I don't know where my head's even going to be. I, uh, I guess I'll have to wait and see. It's possible I don't have any content on Thursday. Deep to right center. Well, not that deep. But extra bases for Campusano. McKinstry skies it. Hey, where's that one guy? I know McKinstry was let go by the Dodgers. Who's that other guy that everybody's big on? Who's that other prospect? I can't remember his name now. Oh, man. What's he up to? I haven't seen them in their, him in their lineups. What's his name? Gavin Lux. Struck him out. Good comeback. Yeah, what's Lux doing? <laughs> Bottom of the ninth coming up. We got one, two, three. I love this. Oh, he's hurt. He tore his ACL. Okay, I didn't know that. Oh, we're going against Trevor May. We traded him away in year one, and now he's trying to slam the door on us in spring training. Anderson base hit left field and the tying run again is at the plate. So some pretty good hitting out of Brian Anderson today. Once I'm done, we'll take a little time to check out our current like stat leaders. So it won't end as soon as the ninth inning is over. Geloff to right struck well, but right at the right fielder. One down. And Tyler Soderstrom. Already two homers in this game. What's he got left in the ninth inning? Yeah, that's a little weird. Geloff's hot zone is only like right in the middle. But we're getting some there. Soderstrom right back up the middle, a third hit. And now two aboard as we get to the eight hitter. And that will be Logan Davidson. Davidson popped it up. I was way too early, I guess. At 96, that doesn't happen very often. But that was right down the middle. Leaves the game up to Jeremy Ironman. How's it going, Mike? 
hopefully we get a little rally going here, but relying on a, a minor league player that doesn't have much experience and is behind 0-2, unfortunately. Can we come back? Got away with that. Two and two. Got a piece. We're still going. Missed inside, and now it's three and two. It's real interesting now. Can May find the zone? No, he can't. They're loaded up. And that leaves it up to Nick Gordon. Signed him away from the Minnesota Twins. Gordon, not hit all that well. And the game is over. We got one right down the middle of the hit. Gordon doesn't have a lot of power there, unfortunately. And that's the game. These spring games are actually a lot of fun, though. We've hit a lot of home runs in this stream. That's been nice to see. We got some power on the way up with Tyler Soderstrom. Seth Brown's been crushing it. This is all Zach Jackson's fault. Well, actually, Gunnar Hoglund gets the loss. But Jackson did give up the other two. That's right. We should edit Capel's potential while we're at it right now before I forget. All right, so Capel was Rookie of the Year, had an outstanding season. I'd like to boost his potential a little bit. It's supposed to be a 63. And we had talked about upping that to 75. He was Rookie of the Year after all. Hit 278, 19 homers. Did I mention he won Rookie of the Year? He was very solid. Deserves better than 63 potential. But it also shows, I mean, he probably came into the game file, the roster, rated higher than his potential. And got to a 70. So we'll just give him that little buff. But who's leading us here through a couple weeks in the spring? Seth Brown and Teoscar Hernandez each have 10 hits. Brian Anderson, though, 8 for 20. I feel like we're getting really solid play out of him. And I have a feeling Anderson's going to become a pretty much everyday player for us. Might not hit for a ton of power, but he's a solid player that can play anywhere. Shea Langoliers has 8 hits. Definitely had some good swings today. Tyler Soderstrom, now we've seen the power a little bit. Needs some more consistency. Nick Gordon, wish he had come through for us there, but we'll give him more chances. He has that high contact, pretty good plate vision. If we sort by batting average and look at the bottom, maybe who's not playing much or struggling a little bit, we should see more of Toro and Ironman, Tyler Wade as well. Uh, Aledmus Diaz, his role is safe. Nick Madrigal, only uh, two hits. Lawrence Butler has five hits so far. Zach Geloff hit the ball hard today. Not many doubles. A couple triples. Soderstrom now at the highest war on the team. Not striking out much at all. 
Power is coming from Brown, Hernandez, Soderstrom, and a little ISO from Brian Anderson, despite only having the one homer. And then for pitching, I want to make sure I get enough innings for some of these guys that I don't know enough about. Fujinami's been really solid, though. Let's look at some of these numbers. Paul Blackburn is pitching all right. Uh, 5.56 FIP isn't good. Luke Weaver, his FIP is better than his ERA, just like all the numbers I went through in here and tried to justify the signing. His surface numbers are bad. The advanced numbers are good. Zach Jackson, could he actually be back this year after a dreadful season last year? Seven homers allowed in 45 innings. Still, he was a positive war player because of that high strikeout rate, it seems. So, I'll be patient. Kyle Muller. Please, Kyle. I should get some innings in with him next uh, stream. Walda Chuck as well. Hudson's been good. Anthony K has been solid. JP Sears. Only five innings, but doing all right. Pretty low sample sizes. Hoglin didn't have the best uh, experience today. But that's where our A's are right now here in spring training. That's a little taste of it, and we'll do more spring training later this week. I'm looking forward to getting on to year two, but I think playing these spring training games will really make it easier for me to put this lineup together for week, uh, not week one, but opening day and get us going with the regular season. I'm planning on getting through all of this spring training stuff this week. I'm focused on spring training in this series, preseason in my Titans franchise, hoping to get to opening day and week one respectively by either the end of the week or right away next week. So that everybody is going to do it. I wish you would play Soderstrom and left. Soderstrom is um, flexible, but his fielding ratings aren't really good. That's why I'm sticking him at first. His defense, I don't think, I don't want to play him in the outfield with those ratings. Maybe one day. But again, that is it for today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Please leave a like if you haven't. Subscribe. More A's coming your way as we continue on. Got some good progress today. I'll see you all next time. Have a good day, everybody.